right, so uh, welcome to the Miami Bass documentary. I go by the name of DJ Laz. I got my homie here, Exotic E, Super DJ, DMC champion, and uh, another one of the originators of the Miami Bass booty music scene. What you're about to hear is authentic. What you're about to see is the truth, the bottom, the bass. Let's go. What else? Uh, let's talk about your start as a DJ. Okay. Let's go back to the beginning. Like what made where Go back to the beginning, shit. I don't know if we, have, we got enough, enough SD cards to say all that shit. Uh, let's see. For those of you that don't know, um, I've been in the game a long time. 22 years at Power 96. The, uh, the originator of the Miami bass booty scene with, with the Spanish flair to it. Um, Shit, it's been a hell of a run, and, and to see, you know, records that we did back, back, back in the day still work, and women get crazy and shake their ass, it's, uh, it's insane. But that's what Miami Booty Music's always been about. It's always been about the ladies. You cater to the ladies, the fellas are just gonna go. But when you see a girl shaking her ass to Miami Booty Music, mm. it don't get no better. Uh, Let's talk about the big shows. Like, what, what, what do you think was the year that the whole Miami Bay shit really jumped off? Like, what do you think it was like '86, '87, '88? What, like, which, what was the year? Uh, well, I, I'm not gonna pinpoint one year, but that that was definitely definitely late '80s, boy. '86, '87, '88. You know, two live crew, dude. Uh, some of the shit we used to do <laughs> and get away with, right? Um, but those are the years that you can just. You know, I, I'd be on the radio playing the, these records, and people would come from out of town, and they didn't know what Miami bass music was all about. And before you know it, they are absolutely in love with what the music does. They didn't really care about anything else, but they sitting there and they see they see the women start dancing and this and that. So you got New York people going, "Damn, I don't know nothing about this Miami bass thing," but. Yo, if it makes a girl do that right there, I am down for that all damn day. But all everybody used to bring me their their booty records. Yo, let's see if I can get last to play this on uh, on the radio, or let's see if I can get last to play this at Six Flags Atlanta. That was like the uh, the ultimate parties on Friday night. Everybody would show up, and it's crazy how many years it's been. Last, big question, stated more importantly, you did play those records. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Listen. If they were good. No, 100%. I've, I've always been honest when it comes to music. You bring me a record to this day. You bring me a record that's good, I got you. You bring me a record that sucks, I'm going to tell you the record sucks, bring me another record. Uh, but yeah, no, everybody would come up, and, and that was like the test to see if the record was dope. I'd pop it in the headphones, I'd listen to it, and I'd be like, yeah, this record's going in right now. Boom. And cut it in. You personally played my song in your IROC, Z28, in the parking lot, taking you back. <laughs> wow. And I found out later you were playing it on the I was very impressed. Uh, listen, I, I, I love Miami Booty music. You know what I'm saying? Being one of the uh, the originators and, and taking pride in that, when somebody used to bring me a record, I used to pray. I'm like, I hope this record's good. I hope this record's good. I hope this record's good. And you know, a lot of the times the records were good. 